Welcome to Naked Security Video News Edition. I'm John Shire. In this video, I'm going to attempt to summarize the massive DDoS attack that affected sites like Twitter, Netflix, Reddit, and many more this past week. So what's the story? Well, here's what we know so far. It appears that this was a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack aimed at DNS services provider DimeDNS. As we know, DNS is like the Internet's phone book. It's the protocol that's used to translate easy-to-remember web addresses like nakedsecurity.sophos.com to numerical addresses that computers understand. But the story doesn't really begin there. Last month, journalist Brian Krebs' site was attacked with a fairly large 140 gigabits per second DDoS attack in apparent retribution for his part in the outing and subsequent arrest of two Israeli men allegedly running a DDoS for hire service. Then a couple of weeks later, a never before seen 624 gigabits per second attack was launched at Krebs site. Although unconfirmed, this attack was likely linked to the arrests as well. At the time, there was some indication that this traffic originated from compromised IoT devices such as IP cameras and digital video recorders. This was followed shortly by another attack aimed at French web hosting provider OVH. This time the traffic peaked at an apparent 1.5 terabits per second involving over 145,000 IoT devices according to its founder. It's been confirmed that some if not all of the devices in those previous attacks originated from compromised IoT devices. Now, according to some sources, there are currently a few competing botanists out there in the wild. Uh, one goes by the name of Bashlight, there's another one by the name of Mirai, and, and a few more as well. Now, they both essentially operate in similar fashion. Scan the internet for accessible hosts, log in using a, well, a list of well-known default passwords, install some code to remotely control those devices, and start DDoSing. Uh, some have suggested that both these botnets are competing for devices, even going so far as trying to take control of each other's assets. Until recently, the source code for these botnets has been kept private. That is, that is until the alleged author of Mirai basically open sourced the code earlier this month. Now the code's available for anyone to amass their own army of compromised IoT devices, no matter the skill level. Things were relatively quiet until 21 October when Dyn came under attack by yet another DDoS. In a statement, Dyn indicated that the source was tens of millions of compromised devices, but in reality is probably closer to about 50,000. One of the reasons for the discrepancy lies in Mirai's source code. There's a function in the code that spoofs and randomizes IP addresses. This means that one device can appear as many devices just by spoofing the source. Dyn's managed DNS infrastructure came under attack, which is why the affected sites became either unresponsive or had increased latency. It's worth pointing out that this attack was directed at the East Coast operations, so not all global traffic was disrupted. It's unclear why both OVH and Dyn were targeted, but undoubtedly it's just the beginning of such attacks, and it should really come as no surprise that this has happened at all. Many in the security industry have been warning about this possibility for years. The combination of an increasing number of connected devices and default passwords that are never changed makes this an inevitability. So it's fair to say that while these events were a new style of DDoS, we haven't seen the end of trouble coming from IoT devices. So how can we prevent this from happening again? Well, if you have any of these types of devices in your network, whether at home or at work, you really need to consider whether you need to keep them online at all. After all, a DVR works just as well if it's enclosed in a network uh, than it does if it's connected to the internet. Same thing with things like you know, fridges and other smart appliances. You know, their food's still gonna be cold, your clothes are still gonna get washed whether or not you connect it to the internet. If you do need to connect it to the internet, do so carefully and make sure that maybe you put a firewall in front of it uh, to, to protect the traffic incoming uh, to that device. Uh, go ahead and you know, change all the passwords as well because these devices very often come with pre-configured default passwords and this is one of the uh, ways that the botnets are getting in is, is by basically brute forcing uh, a known list of, of common passwords. And, uh, by rebooting the device, you can uh, very often wipe the code that's been implanted by these botnets and reset the device to uh, a better state. So change the password, get them offline if possible, 
And before buying any of these devices, consider uh, you know, the alternatives, right? Do some research, research whether these things can be patched to protect any against, against any uh, current and future vulnerabilities, and, and really do as much homework as you can to uh, basically protect yourself and others from such events happening in the future. So until next time, stay safe out there, and remember that security is a shared responsibility.